Hi, I'm Alice. And I'm Greg. And today we're here in Querétaro. And we're going to go for Baroque. Yeah, come with us. On our recent visit to Santiago de Querétaro, we stayed in the Centro Histórico neighborhood. This area predates the Spanish conquest and is officially recognized by UNESCO as a World Heritage Center due to the preservation of Spanish colonial architecture from the 17th and 18th centuries. In today's video, we'd like to shine a light on the town's remarkable Baroque and ultra-Baroque architecture. Baroque is a style that arose in Europe in the 17th century in opposition to the Protestant Reformation. Baroque-style architecture and adornment was encouraged by the Catholic Church to evoke a sense of over-the-top awe, wonder, and emotion from churchgoers. The style became wildly popular in Europe and was subsequently exported to Nueva España, as Mexico was then known. An ultra-Baroque style known as churriguresque soon developed marked by highly detailed stucco work. In Mexico, the style became fused with folk motifs. The Spanish Catholic penchant for extreme realism in their artistic depictions of the suffering of Christ, as well as the various other saints, was mixed with indigenous religious iconography, which resulted in some of the most grisly, yet fascinating, statues. Baroque's influence in Mexico was so widespread and popular that a style of music called Mexican Baroque arose, and the Baroque preference for intense sensualism carried over into the poetry of Mexico's literary heroine, Sor Juana Inés de la Cruz, a proto-feminist nun who is worthy of a full video on her own. Sor Juana often found herself at odds with the church, which resented her feminist arguments, her extraordinary intelligence and literary talent, and her very close relationship with the Countess Maria Luisa de Paredes, wife of the Viceroy of Spain. The vast wealth and power of the Catholic Church in Nueva España is at the heart of ultra-Baroque architecture. Not content with churigoresque plaster facades, the Catholic churches of Nueva España moved them indoors and then covered every square inch in 24 karat gold leaf, making an ostentatious show of the massive wealth being extracted from Mexico's mines. For example, take a look at the Capilla de la Virgen del Rosario in Puebla, considered one of the greatest examples of ultra-baroque architecture in the world. Or Santa Prisca de Tasco, built between 1751 and 1780 and funded in large part by a Mexican mine owner who went bankrupt in the process. Power struggles between the church and the Spanish monarchy were intense because the church exercised a special right dating back to the Middle Ages, a right called fuero, which gave them jurisdiction to own massive amounts of real estate and property without having to pay taxes. And let's not forget that the church still had the power of the Inquisition behind them at this time. But today, we want to show you just a small sample of the Baroque landmarks in Santiago de Querétaro. You'll see why this city is a must-visit for fans of Mexican Baroque architecture. El Templo de San Antonio de Padua, 1613. Considered one of the finest examples of painted tapestry Baroque interiors in Mexico, this church also displays the Arabic influences on Spanish colonial architecture. The Cloister of San Agustin, constructed between the years 1731 and 1745, now houses the Museo de Arte de Querétaro, showcasing both religious and historic art of the Baroque period, including this remarkable painting of a friar with a lock on his mouth. Our lips are sealed. La Casa de la Marquesa a Baroque masterpiece from the 18th century, was constructed as a private residence and now houses an elegant hotel and restaurant. The 
Templo de Santa Rosa de Viterbo, one of the best examples of 18th century Mexican ultra-baroque style. You can think of ultra-baroque as baroque on steroids. The exterior of this magnificent church shows off Arabic influences and mannerist expressions, such as the elaborately painted exterior flying buttresses, but it's the interior of the church that is designed to overwhelm the senses. Like the Chapel of the Rosary in Puebla, you can watch our video on Puebla for a peek at that world-famous church. Nearly every inch of the surface is covered in gilded plaster and rich sculptural details. Alice and I find it ironic that while the indigenous people of Mexico were subjugated and impoverished, the church went to great lengths to show off their material wealth in such an ostentatious way. In my opinion, that sort of insensitive display is what gets the rich overthrown. In fact, in future years, the wealth and power of the church would be severely curtailed. And even though the church, and in particular the priest Miguel Hidalgo y Costilla, would play a crucial role in Mexico's War of Independence after some years passed, the unchecked power of the church became a concern for the government. Recently, we asked some of you on Instagram and on YouTube to leave your comments and let us know what you wanted to see, what you were interested in. And one person, I think, said Baroque. So, so of course, we have we to go out. <laughs> Yes. So we hope you enjoyed the video. Let us know in the comments what else you want to see. We'll do our best, if it interests us, to also look it up. <laughs> Highly qualified. Um, <laughs> If you like today's video or if you like the content of our channel, please give us a like, please subscribe, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when we upload a new video just every Thursday. Thank you. We'll see you next week.